Hi everybody, welcome to the Stop Dropping It podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Stop Dropping It podcast, episode 72. My name is Lisa. I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York, and this is a podcast where I chat all about my knitting and spinning and natural dyeing projects. Today I have a whole lot of knitting to talk about. So I have updates on last week's projects. Last week's episode was my Knits Gone Wrong episode. So I have some updates to share with you about those projects. We've got lots to talk about today, but first of all, I am so excited to talk about what I am wearing today. Today, I am finally, 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 finally wearing my finished Artist Journey sweater. This is a pattern by Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fiber Co. I started this sweater such a long time ago. Two years ago, actually. I started this sweater. It was started as a test knit for Annie. And it's probably the only test knit that I have failed to complete. Probably as in... It's definitely the only test knit that I failed to complete. I don't know. There were just, there were so many things. I, first of all, first of all, before we get into all of that, can I just tell you how much I actually really love the finished sweater? I'm going to stand up and show it to you guys in a minute here. But this sweater... Yeah, two years in the making, and it's it's finally, finally finished. Um, it was a slow sweater. I do feel very bad that I did not finish this test knit anywhere close to on time, but neither did anybody else. And I think that we all underestimated the complexity of this design. So... I'm going to stand up and come a little bit closer so that you guys can see everything that is going on. So as you can see, we have a full color work sweater, but the sections between the color work, which is a little difficult to see on my sweater because of the speckled yarn that I used, but there is a twisted stitch pattern on here. And so the twisted stitch pattern is basically a one by one twisted stitch that kind of zigzags through the pattern. It would have gone a lot faster probably if I felt comfortable and confident in my ability to do the twisted stitches without a cable needle. However, I used a super wash yarn for this sweater and it was quite slippery so I just did not feel comfortable twisting my stitches without the assistance of a cable needle and that slowed this project down tremendously. The color work sections overall were pretty smooth sailing. There's obviously a lot of them. Mostly this was two color color work but every once in a while there were some three color work rows, which also slowed me down quite a bit. Just, I can do three color knitting, but it's just much slower for me. I don't have a comfortable way of holding my yarn still, even though at this point, I have knit several sweaters that use three color work at various points in the design. So yeah, I think just between those two things, it. I lost my momentum after I missed the deadline for the test knit. I think at that point I had like most of the body done, most of it done, but not, not all of it. Like when, when this went into hibernation the first time, the shoulders were not yet seamed together and I still had part of 
like half of the front on one side to still knit. So a year ago, it came out of hibernation and I finished up the body. I knit a complete sleeve and I did like maybe the very first band of color work on the second sleeve. And then it went back into hibernation. I just, I lost all my steam. I think it went back into hibernation the second time when we were packing up everything to move. And at that point it was April and I wasn't gonna be wearing this anytime soon. So it just went away. So this year, finally, it came out of hibernation again at the end of every year or the start of every new year. I have been doing a roundup video of what projects are still lingering whips and this was high on the list to get finished this winter and I did it um, in January I didn't touch it at all because I was working on a test knit for Katherine Clark but once that sweater was done this was the first project to come out of hibernation and I finished it like I just I went and I didn't stop until it was finished and it feels so good so 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 good to finally have it done when i showed you guys the sweater last week i had a gazillion ends to weave in pretty sure i took a picture of all of the ends when they were finally woven in but it's done and i love it going to back up just a little bit so that we can see like how this fits on me I haven't gotten a chance to take any pictures yet. This is the first time I am wearing it, but I, I really love the fit. My body is here. It has a really nice amount of ease. The length is really perfect on me. I really like the length. Like it's not, I've got wider hips now, so it just kind of sits right above my hips, which is perfect because it doesn't do anything weird. I think the only, oops, the only part of the fit of the sweater that is not perfect is right here at the arms. It's, it's not too tight, but I feel it like it's right up against my arms. And I think that because of that, there's no real, there's no ease underneath the arms over here. Um, and so it's fine. Um, I don't know that I could or would want to wear anything underneath this that wasn't like a tank top but it's also super soft and close to just it's really really soft so I don't feel like I need to wear anything underneath it and yeah I am I'm so pleased the yarn that I used was Wonderland yarns I purchased the yarn for this project a couple months before I became a brand ambassador for them so the sweater was a hundred percent purchased by me but now I'm a brand ambassador and you can save 15% on your Wonderland Yarns order with the code YARNVIP. So you can use that at any time and save a little bit of money. I love the colors so much. I forget, I don't have the yarn here. I think it was the Mad Hatter base that I use. I think it's a sport weight yarn. The main color is called Frippery and all of the color work was an eight pack mini skein set called Rhyme and Reason. And all of the jewel tones, I used six of the eight colors and it's just, I am so happy with the finished result of the sweater. This was definitely a labor. It was a labor of love for what the finished project was going to be. Not so much love for the process, but yeah. Sometimes you can't have it all in a knit. And I really just, the moment that I saw this sweater, when Annie put out her test knit, I fell in love with it. And I knew that I really wanted to have this piece in my wardrobe. I wish that I had completed it on time. I wish that I had enjoyed the process a little bit more. I do not enjoy doing one by one twisted stitches with a cable needle. So um, I've since learned how to do them. We'll talk about that later um, without a cable needle. But yeah, so Artist Journey by Boho Chic Fiber Co. Annie Lufton is now a sweater that I can just wear and enjoy 
and I'm so happy to have that done. So that's what I'm wearing today. Let's move on to finished objects. So for finished objects today, I have just a half finished object. I finally finished my sock. I have been working with this Knitterly Things yarn for a few months now because I knit my son Owen a pair of socks out of the same yarn um, right before Christmas and I fell in love with this colorway. This colorway is called That Fall Feeling and uh, it is just it's just gorgeous. I love how gender neutral this colorway is. It goes with so many things in my wardrobe. It goes with obviously so many things in my son's wardrobe. It's got his favorite blue and orange colors in here. It's got my favorite purple in here. It's just this this colorway is stunning. I have showed you guys this these socks so many times so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it here today but I used the my knitted heart vanilla socks pattern and I finally I fixed I had made a mistake I've been knitting this pattern forever and last week I had told you all about a mistake I had made when I put the heel on I put the heel in the wrong place but I fixed it so now the ribbing is on the sides where it is supposed to be it is just a um, traditional like slip stitch uh, heel flap and heel turn construction and I've got one sock. Now I have to knit the other one. So that is all of the knitted finished objects I have but I'm not going to have a spinning segment today because I haven't done any spinning this week, but I did want to show you my finished yarn. So I have now, I showed you guys this yarn last time, but I have now washed it and thwacked it and dried it. This is yarn that I spun from Wildwood, Wild Wool Farm. This was gifted to me, this fiber, to spin up, and oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. So this is what it looks like. It is a Merino Coriadale mix, and I just, I love it so much. The, uh, I'll show you guys, out of the skein, I'll untwist it here. So the, the different shades were blended um, through the drum carter, the different fibers and colors together. My, my tension or my, my yarn weight is inconsistent, but I don't know if we're focusing here. Um, we're, we're a bit in, here, let me just stand up here. We're a bit inconsistent. Uh, but I just I love it so so much and this this was like a real pleasure to spin up so the different shades of blue are absolutely gorgeous um, I'll show you the purple too the purple is my absolute favorite um, I mean you can tell these these colors match my sweater I love jewel tones I love jewel tone colors so much and uh, I'm so thrilled with this yarn. So let me stand up again so my face gets out of the way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just completely finished now. I know I showed it last week, but it hadn't yet been washed and dried. So uh, the only thing that I haven't done is calculate the yardage <laughs> so um, yeah I would say that in places this is maybe a sport weight at its thinnest and maybe a DK to, to worsted maybe at its thickest I don't know I have I have those little tools 
from Katrinkles and that you can like lay your yarn onto so um, and kind of tell like I can figure out how many wraps per inch but it's thick and thin it's it's not perfect so I don't know I don't really know if it's gonna qualify as like one single weight of yarn or not but I'll use it for something you guys will be seeing this yarn again once I figure out um, oh, that was terrible once I figure out what it what it wants to become I think my plans are to use this yarn in some kind of color work project but I, I don't know I don't know what it's gonna be yet for now I'm just going to enjoy the finished yarn looking at it and squishing it it's it's just it's stunning. I am so happy with it. So again, this is fiber from Wild Wolf Farm and Arlene sent it to me to unbox and try out and I received it six months ago in September. I spun it up on my drop spindle. So it took me, it took me kind of a while to get through all of it. I mean, I went through periods where I wasn't spinning for several weeks during the winter, but I'm spinning more regularly again now and I'm so happy that this is all finished. I love it so much. So that is everything that I have finished. Let's go into lips and give you the updates on my knits gone wrong from last time. There's still, there's still a saga. There's still a saga. So onward to whips. So we'll start with the lesser of the two evils. Yes, I think, I think that's a good idea. Um, my husband's socks. So let's review really quickly. I am knitting my husband this beautiful sock. I really, really like it so much. Um, and this is the Checklist of Birds sock. It is a yarn collaboration between Gage Dye Works and Andrea Wrangel, knitwear designer. So this is the Great Blue Heron colorway. My husband grew up on Blue Heron Drive for a little while when he, he moved a lot, but one of his childhood homes was on Blue Heron Drive. And... Um, he really likes birds a lot and he's always pointing out birds and he really likes the great blue heron. So when I saw that that was one of the colorways, I was perfect. Like I'm going to get this for my husband. So, okay. So Gage Dye Works, this collaboration, for some reason, Gage Dye Works does not make six ounce skeins, just four ounce. So there's 115 grams in this skein. My husband has very, very big feet. He is a size 12. And the way that Gage Dye Works dyes their yarn, um, the heel toe and cuff yarn is in the center and the self striping yarn is on the other half of the skein. So like one half of the skein or like a certain mathematical proportion of the skein is for the heels and toes. Like if you unwound it, one whole section would be beige and the other section would have the stripes. It's brilliant actually how they do it. The pattern has four different sizes. I am knitting the size three. The sizes are more for circumference of the leg than they are for foot length, right? So. I'm knitting the size three out of four. My husband has size 12 feet, which means that his foot was very long. So I was realizing what I said last week was that I was not gonna have enough of this yarn to knit two socks from this one skein. You're supposed to be able to. The pattern is written in such a way that you can get two socks out of it, however, when I showed you guys last week, for his size foot, you're supposed to stop after the fourth bird pattern repeat. So 
one, two, three, four, and then knit the cuff. So his sock was like only this tall. He really, he wasn't having any of that. It was, he wanted trouser length socks as I always knit him. They were longer than shorty socks. Even if I made them into shorty socks, he only wears white shorty socks. That's just the way he is. He will wear fun socks with his trousers and jeans and stuff, but he's not gonna wear like a footy sock in a striped wool yarn. He's just not going to. So anyway, I did find out that Gage Dyeworks actually does sell 150 gram skeins. For some reason, they did not do that for the checklist of birds collab. So my update is that I went on their site, I ordered another skein of this colorway. Thank goodness I did because the way that Gage Dye Works does their collections is that they're not permanent. They're here for, I think I bought this in maybe September, October, something like that. They keep them around for a few months and then they kind of retire them. They had already sold out of more than half of the bird collection colorways. So you can bet I snagged up another skein of this because I really do like it. I didn't, a lot of you guys said just, just take it out, just it's not worth buying a second skein of yarn, but I really did like it. And so now I've ordered another skein. It's coming from Canada, so they're dyed to order, although I think that one was just what was in stock, but you know that I ordered other things as well to save on shipping or to make better use of my money just because I wanted to, really. Um, so what I've done so far, I'm still working on his sock. I added so far one more repeat, and then I asked him what he thought about the length, and he still wants it longer. So. I have enough yarn to probably do two more repeats, so I'll do another pattern repeat, see how he thinks about the length and whether I just use the whole darn thing or not. He's got big feet. So so that's the status. I still, there's like a, I like dropped a stitch that I found last time during the podcast. I still need to go and tack that down. but. I really do like these. They fit him perfectly. They just weren't long enough. So, so we're still working on that. So not finished yet. Let's get into the sweater saga now. That was the guinea pig. I'm jumping up onto the upper level platform of his cage. If you guys heard that, Owen has a guinea pig named Skunk. He is pretty stinky, but it's because he looks like a skunk, his coloring, but sometimes he's really noisy. Anyway, let's get the sweater. Okay. My Feel the Burn sweater. I finished it again. Again. I finished it again. It is finished. It is longer and I don't like it. I made it too long. I don't like the length. I'm gonna put it on for you guys so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then we'll discuss. <laughs> Some things about the fit I think are good and other things, actually no. I, I really don't like the fit. I'm not gonna wear it. And this is a problem. So this, this is still not done. We, we still have work to do, so we'll talk about it. All right, I guess before, before we put it on, in case you're new here, welcome. <laughs> this is my Feel the Burn sweater, and I knit this out of my naturally dyed yarn. I dyed all of the colors, well, the white is undyed, but all of the rest of them were dyed with black walnut. So the, um, the medium brown color, was like the regular color from the black walnut. The lighter tan was an exhaust bath, and then the darker brown 
was the medium brown first and then I used an iron after bath to darken the color. I love it. The um, As soon as I saw all the different shades of brown, I knew this, this pattern was in my queue. I really, really wanted to knit this pattern. It's gorgeous. The browns on me, I love the color brown on me. I don't gravitate towards browns, but it's a good color for me. All right, so I'm gonna put it on and then we'll discuss. Okay. I love it. Like I, I want to love this so much, but I want it to be perfect and the fit is just not perfect. So, all right, first of all, I was, I was wondering how this like was going to fit and it's not quite as high. Like before I blocked it, it was, it was sitting more up here. Like this row of color work here, this band of color work, I was saying last time was not giving any stretch. Like these, the other parts of the color work, you can see these have a lot of give. This one here, it just, it, it didn't. And so I was like wondering about the neck. I'll show you guys the, um, so she does the short rows. There's a short rows in the back to raise, to raise the neckline in the back. And I mean, it, it doesn't fit I'd say it doesn't like fit perfectly, but I, I like it. It's comfortable. I can live with it. It's not like right up against my neck like it was initially. So this, this has improved. The fit of the yoke, I'm really pleased with actually. It could be better if it were maybe like a little bit, a little bit lower, but I can live with this without, without being upset about it. Okay. Do you see how beautiful these browns are on me? It's so pretty. It's, it's just, it's such a pretty sweater. I want to love this, but I'm gonna show you why I don't. So I'm gonna stand up, move the chair so we can talk about it a little bit. Okay. So this is how it's fitting on me. And what I don't like about it <laughs> Now part of this, I mean, it just, the way that this is, it, it highlights my tummy. I'm not gonna wear this like this. The, I'm, I'm not sure that I want to keep the color work at the bottom. The sleeves are still, I, I need to make them a bit longer, I think. I mean, I could live with the sleeves being a little bit shorter, but, <sighs> I don't like this, okay? So, like, it's just highlighting my stomach, and that is not what I want. I am, and, and the way that the length is on this, which is a probably, I think, I think my other sweater that I was just wearing actually comes down to, like, right here. So I want to shorten this sweater about whatever that is, two inches, three inches, I overdid it. So initially, I wanted to add length. I had I had made it so that the color work was up here, and I don't, maybe I should have just left it. Maybe I should have left it like that. I I want to make this sweater so that I feel comfortable in the body that I have right now. I used to be a skinny little twig that couldn't keep weight on no matter how much I ate. That's all changed ever since I had a baby. My body is different now. Yes, I wanna lose 10 pounds, but I don't want to wait to wear my sweater until I lose weight because realistically, maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't. And if it doesn't happen, then I've got a sweater that I can't wear. And so, the ease on this sweater, because it was designed as a cropped sweater, there's not like so much positive ease here, okay? Now, all right, 
I also, I didn't swatch. I just blindly cast on. So that's my fault too. I am meeting gauge. Maybe I should have picked one size bigger and then maybe that would have solved like the fit up here and the amount of ease. So, but I'm not gonna start from scratch. I think that this can work the way that I have it. But I think what I'm gonna do is eliminate, I keep standing up and sitting down, but <laughs> I think what I want to do is, I like the color work on the sleeves, but I don't also like it with the body. So the way that she wrote the pattern, Caitlin Hunter had short sleeves, right? So that there was no color work here, it was just short sleeves. And then this color work was kind of raised up a bunch, even more than that, but um, I might be able to even live with it like that. But I think that I don't know if I like it, like do, should I just, should I just take out two inches and leave the color work in? This, already I like this better because now we're not hugging my hips funny, like the color work's not cinching in funny. I could also do the ribbing without going down a needle size. So I could, I could maybe, all right, so these are my options. Do I, just take out a little bit of the length. I like this a lot better. And then this still is sitting like where I feel more comfortable, right? So that would be an option like that. Or do I want to take out the color work and have it be with just without the color work on the bottom. So these are like my two, my two options. Do I wanna do this, which is kind of what I was thinking initially, just like take out the color work, put the ribbing on without going down a needle size so that it would be a little bit more drapey, like that maybe. Do I wanna do that or do I want to do this? and just raise it and then have it like that. Opinions. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. Uh, yeah, I don't mind re-knitting. I don't mind re-knitting. I just want the end result to be a sweater that I'm gonna wear and be really happy with. So I overdid it when it came to the length i added just too much on i should as as probably i think more than one of you but at least one of you suggested to like figure out my preferred length for my sweaters for underarm to hem yes i should do that <laughs> that's what i should do i should figure it out i really do like the length of the artist's journey sweater that I'm going to change back to, into in a minute here and it's about maybe two between two and three inches shorter than what this is so yeah so that's where this is um so so what should I do should I leave the color work on the bottom and just like take out a couple of inches and just raise it a little bit higher or should I just rip out the color work and just eliminate the color work on the body, leave it just on the yoke and on the sleeves, and then just put the hem. Either way, that's the length that I am now going for. So not cropped, but not like super long that it's going around my stomach and my hips. And I'm gonna knit the ribbing just on the same needle size, I think. So, opinions, weigh in, comments. You guys gave me so many comments last week. It was amazing. I love hearing your input. So please give me feedback. What should I do? What do you vote for? Yes, color work, no color work. What do I do? And then after I figure out the body, I will decide if I can live with the sleeves being a little bit shorter 
do I want to just extend the ribbing a little bit or do I want to extend the brown part a little bit or do I just want to not bother? So I think I'll have a clearer idea of what I want to do with the sleeves after I solve the body. But yeah, so this is still very much a work in progress. It's very whippy, very whippy. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna change back into my artist journey sweater. So stick around, I'll be right back, back in my other sweater. I have one quick little thing for my Sparking Joy segment. So every once in a while, I like to share something knitting related that has been a sparking joy for me. And I forgot to share it in last week's episode, probably because I was just so focused on all the things going wrong with my knitting and I just, it slipped my mind. But most of you probably were aware that Vogue Knitting Live happened in New York City last month, a few weekends ago. I did not go. I've actually, even though it's, you know, always in New York, I've never been. And this was the first year that they had it again in person since the pandemic and all that stuff. But the thing that I wanted to share with you is that Hohi Locatelli was like a keynote speaker, a guest speaker at like one of the dinners. And she uploaded her video to her YouTube channel. And so it was really, really great to hear her knitting story. And it was, it was amazing. She's, she's so fun. That was so much fun to watch. And so I'm gonna link that video in the description box below my video so that you guys can check it out too. Because it was just a pleasure to hear her talk about her story. She's really funny. And really really sweet and I just tremendously enjoyed watching that and the fact that she put that up on her channel so that all of us who couldn't attend Vogue Knitting Live could could see her her talk was amazing so that is everything that I have for you today as always, you can follow me on Ravelry Lisa Jack 78 is my username and I'm also on Instagram at Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio. And if you have not done so already, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up with all of my projects and all the things that I share with you. And I really tremendously enjoy receiving comments from all of you. So please leave me a comment especially regarding my feel the burn sweater i want to know your opinions on do i do the color work do i not do the color work what should i do i need some input i'm kind of torn between the two options so anyway i hope that you all have an amazing week and thank you so much for watching i will see you next time bye bye